Good day, you sexy internet travelers! Bailey here, and today we are going to dive in to Boruto. So several weeks ago, Studio Perot released episode 1 of Boruto, Naruto the Next Generations, and since then, two more episodes have been released. And so today, I decided to look at what they are doing and assess the key differences between Boruto and Naruto. The first thing you should know is that Boruto and Naruto, despite sounding similar, are not written by the same people. Boruto is written by Ukyo Kodachi, and Naruto is written by Masashi Kishimoto. And here is where my first concern about Boruto comes in. While Naruto has its fair share of problems, I feel that one of the most redeeming qualities of Naruto was the level of detail that went into the story. You have elements introduced in the first few episodes that pertain to a story several hundred episodes later, and while it's still too early to judge the level of forethought that has gone into the writing of Boruto, I think Ukyo Kodachi has very large story writing shoes to fill, but maybe he can get a smaller pair of shoes from the Leaf Village's Nike outlet because we seem to have progressed into a more modern village, which brings us to our setting and the presentation of Boruto. Now one change that I think most everyone will welcome is the upgrade in animation quality. Now of course the quality of Naruto improved constantly over time, but I wasn't sure if Boruto was going to suffer a downgrade in animation. To my delight though, it was quite the opposite. While I can't say I'm really digging the story of the characters that much, it's really colorful and pleasant to watch. And not only does the animation look super sharp and super tasty, but Studio Perel has also done an excellent job in painting a more modern and developed leaf village. The only problem with the village seems to be the residents and their brilliantly new and refreshing characters and personalities. And, and by new, I mean slightly altered versions of their predecessors. Introducing Miniature Rock Lee! His only notable character design change is that his eyes are slightly slanted and his name is Metal. Also introducing fan favorite Miniature Shikamaru, who is even less distinguishable from his predecessor than Miniature Rock Lee. And also everyone's favorite eyesore, this unfortunate looking female version of Choji. Now, as bad as some of the character design is, most of it's actually really good, and I'm honestly just poking fun at a few of the cringy ones. In many ways, it's tasteful because a lot of kids do look nearly identical to their parents. But with that said, what is not so forgivable is the complete lack of personality some of these characters have. Miniature Shikamaru, aka Shigadai, has had zero definitive differences between him and Shikamaru, and the same thing applies to our miniature version of Rock Lee. Metal has almost the exact same personality of Rock Lee, with the one negligible exception of him messing things up when he gets nervous. Now with that said, not all of the characters' personalities have been lazily created. Thankfully, our main character, Boruto, has quite a distinctive personality that differs significantly from Naruto. He's a cocky, obnoxious brat, but he cares about his sister and mother. We also have Sarada, who seems to be a well-balanced blend of Sasuke and Sakura. She's reserved and collected, but also a bit anxious at times. Additionally, we have Inojin, who is a fairly unique character as a whole, and comes across as a low-key edgelord gangsta badass. So, so far, the characters aren't too bad, but I don't think they are nearly as inspiring as the characters from Naruto. Sure, the Boruto characters might be semi-distinguishable, but what really made the characters of Naruto wasn't their personalities, but their backstories. Now, I'm not condemning the characters of Boruto to a fate of inferiority in comparison to Naruto. All I'm saying is that if they want to meet or exceed the previous standards set by Naruto, they will need to have some pretty major character development transpire to make up for the inescapable lack of backstory. Now, as far as the actual storytelling goes, it's still too early to form any permanent judgments, but my initial impression so far is that a lot of it seems arbitrary and superficial. From Boruto running into a conflict with another classmate that seems like it will have no lasting significance, to Inojin initially seeming to harbor a negative sentiment towards Boruto that is overcome in just one episode. However, this still very much feels like the calm before the storm, and I want to try to remain as unbiased as possible and look at this series completely objectively. So I'm gonna give it some time, see what happens, and hope for the best, but whether you are a die-hard Naruto fan who loves anything to do with Naruto, or someone who hates every part of it, I implore you, destroy sexy internet travelers.